Hi, I'm Dorit. This is my new bus, Gumboot, and she is a 2000 International 3800 T444E, baby. Come check it out. Hello, welcome to the outside of my bus. I decided to go with this beautiful glazed pot orange terracotta color. I really think it, it matches all of my plants. So that's all that I wanted. This is my outdoor couch. Everybody has those adorable little camp chairs and I just kind of wanted something different. So I bought a cushion from the thrift store and I filled it with another cushion and here we go, a little tire couch. Um, other modifications we did to the outside. I'm sitting right next to my diesel heater exhaust pipe here. In my previous bus, you may remember, <laughs> my absolute hatred for my wood stove. So I definitely upgraded with this little nugget. It toasts up gumboot, my bus, very quickly. I'm absolutely in love with it. Highly, highly recommend getting yourself a diesel heater. This is my water door. It's the inflow for my water tank system. It just has a hose that goes straight to my water tank on the inside. Pretty straightforward. Cutting it was a little bit of an adventure, but I'm really happy that I did it. It's much easier than getting a hose all the way through my bus. Welcome to the dungeon. <laughs> this is where I temporarily keep my diesel heater tank. It is eventually going to be undermounted, but I'm still waiting on a gas um, filling door to come in the mail. And then behind it here, might be kind of difficult to see, I have a 20 gallon fresh water tank that is filled in the back there by the hose that is connected to the water door. Yeah, and then under here is just my general garage, you know, hostage holding area. Let's talk about Dex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about Dex. <laughs> this is my rooftop deck. Here is the ladder. Goes all the way up to my 18 and a half foot long beautiful rooftop deck. Shout out to Joe Garden Bell. I saw a photo of their bus's deck and I was like, how do I do that? And so my friend Isaac messaged them and Joe literally responded with a full detailed list of every single part. So major shout out to you, man. I could not have done this without you, literally. It's basically just a very simple construction of just metal pipes. So we have flanges, the nipples, <laughs> Uh, street elbows and more nipples that comprise the ladder portion and then on the roof we have flanges nipples 45 degree street elbows and then another flange and those are supporting the two by fours which are weather treated they never decay and then on the top uh, I was like in the I was in the aisle the lumber aisle trying to find deck wood deck wood's really expensive and I was kind of overwhelmed so I backed up and I literally fell into this huge 20 foot long cart of these boards and they were all on clearance and there was exactly 17 of them which is exactly the number that I needed so it was fate the bus gods were smiling upon me that day and I got my plastic deck wood that I never have to treat never have to replace really it'll it'll last a lifetime Welcome to my deck! This is 18 and a half feet tall by nine feet wide. Uh, up here, pretty blank, blank, blank slate. I wanted to keep it pretty open so I could fit chairs, tables, whatever I wanted to do up here, rooftop yoga. Um, the only thing that's going on up here is my grape solar panel, 300 watts. Made in America, out of Eugene, amazing company, great customer service. We needed an extender cable and they were super accommodating. We just went to their warehouse and picked one up. So highly, highly recommend Grape Solar. Thank you guys. <laughs> this is my shore power. Okay, bye. This is the only piece of original yellow that I kept because how on earth could I have covered Handy Bus? You just can't do that, you just can't. Come on in. <laughs> oh God, fall into a hole. <laughs> so one thing that I didn't like about my previous bus 
was that the passenger either had to sit on the ground next to me or on the dinette, in which case we could never have a really good conversation. And so I knew that that was something I wanted to change in my next bus. So in this bus, I was looking and I didn't really like the layout of people having the passenger seat bolted to the floor right next to the drivers. It was blocking the entryway. So I wanted something that folded out of the way, but was still super sturdy for my passenger. So I came up with this like folding jump seat, kind of like what a flight attendant would sit on. So this is my passenger seat. She just folds up. Each of these brackets is good to hold 200 pounds. So I can hold, you know, like a fairly sized like lion in here if I wanted to. Um, and they just fold away when I don't have a passenger. It also doubles as a really great table. It's bolted to the frame of my bus. So if anything were to ever happen, my passenger wouldn't be going anywhere. Eventually I will get a seat belt, but Amazon wait times, you know. <sighs> As you may remember from my previous bus, I had a specific designated location for all of my weedly diddlies. And here I've kept the same theme. This is my front dash plant garden shell and bone pin collection place. <laughs> it's also a good place for my speaker and my shoes. So this seat cover um, was actually given to me by Leroy Furwood. He helped me actually pick up my bus in New Mexico. Thank you, Leroy. I, I don't know what I would have done without you. I really don't. Um, so I, I carry this rug that he kind of jokingly gave to me. Um, it saved my butt though. The seat is really scratchy and I was driving through the desert in shorts and it, it saved my butt, literally. <laughs> um, this little macrame on the back was given to me by a friend's cousin. She was having a like a costume giveaway and I snagged this one because I thought it would be perfect for the back of my driver's seat. <laughs> I think my major tip is to be confident in your build, in who you are. Don't look at other people on Instagram or social media and think like, oh, well, she's doing this awesome thing and think that you're any less badass. Like, it's such a freaking like, man's world out there. And we got to rally together, us ladies of the nomadic movement. Um, so just be you. Have fun in your rig, whatever it may be, whatever stage it's in, um, and own it. This is my new and improved throne. It does not yet have a, th a crown painted on it. That is very soon on my list. Um, in here, this little step, little squatty potty is where I keep my toilet paper and where eventually pine shavings will live. Um, and then this is velvet in place and it just hinges up like that. And then you, you got a normal little toilet in there. It's a little separator toilet. So we have number two in the back for the stinky business. And then in the front, there's a, a pee funnel that goes to a jug. Oh, hello. <laughs> Didn't see you there. I was luxuriating too hard. Um, <laughs> this is my bathtub. I was heavily inspired by Since We Woke Up, Tawny and her amazing, amazing wine barrel tub. Mine, unfortunately, cannot be moved to the rooftop deck, something I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, but for now, this is luxurious. I mean, taking a bath in a school bus. Amazing. This is my dinette. I knew from my last bus that I needed a dinette. It was the center of my home last time, and so I knew I needed that to continue in this home. Uh, the one problem I did not foresee with changing from a van chassis bus like I had before to a semi-truck chassis like this one is, is the wheels are a lot bigger. So the wheel well I had intended to fill up one of the dinette boxes um, in the design that I had drawn up and had been dreaming of, but when I finally got this bus and I cleared out the seats, I realized how large the wheel well is. The wheel well quite literally extends from here all the way back to here. And so I would have either lost all of my dinette storage and I wouldn't have been able to put anything in the dinette or I had to change my layout a little bit. So I decided to go um, with this raised platform idea and I was really nervous about it at first because I didn't want my open concept to be kind of drawn to this dinette just sticking up like a tower um, but I actually really like it and there's an incredible amount of storage in it so this is a huge pull-out drawer with a lot of garbage on the inside don't look in there um, and then both of these just fold down they're held together in uh, with child locks right now so they don't flap open um, and that's just like stuffing storage um, 
stuffing storage, stuffing storage. And then back here is where my diesel heater lives. So there's just the exhaust vent here and then the big pipe and then the diesel heater lives in the back, uh, kind of so that it can have more room to breathe. The back is open so that it has a lot of intake air. And then both of the dinette boxes are also storage. So this just folds up <laughs> and there's an incredible amount of storage for one person. I have too much stuff in here now. <laughs> uh, a second note about the dinette is, uh, of course I wanted it to fold down into a second bed and I, I was trying to figure it out and I didn't realize how much the window would affect me. So I haven't quite figured out how to drop it down into a bed. So for now, it just lives as a table in everyone's hearts. So I didn't want one of those annoying, like fold up, hingy things that you'd have to like hold on with your head. So I wanted something that would cover the ugliness of my hostage holding area slash garage, um, but still provide uh, like a, a low amount of vibe. So I went with just scrap pieces of my dinette and it's again, just Velcroed in place. Velcro, if you hear this, come find me, sponsor me. Um, yeah, and it just slides into the small space between the dinette and the bed frame. And you can see my, it's an easy way to see my water system as well. <laughs> uh, so I can always check if there's any leaks or anything. And when I need to move or when I'm done seeing the ugliness, um, I just smash it back into place. I bought and built this bus in under a month, including demo, buying all the materials, crying, having a mental breakdown, and then continuing building. One month, 30 days. If my ass can do this, anyone can do this. Before this, I had some experience like with a power drill and like making furniture, but I had never, I had never taken the seats out of a bus. I had never run plumbing. I had never figured out how to seal a wine barrel for a bathtub. Like anything that you want to do, you can learn, you can teach yourself. It doesn't matter you know, how long it takes you to get there. Just be determined and, and know that there's other girls out there like me and all the other ladies of the nomadic movement who are cheering you on and we're here to support you. So feel free to reach out to me if you're having a hard time. Like I've been there, I've been crying on the ground while putting away tools. It happens, <laughs> like you got this. <laughs> So this is my headboard box. It um, originally was longer, but then the full bed didn't fit in it quite well. So I turned it on its side and it works great now. These are just popped in there. They're not hinged or anything so that I can easily get in and out of them. I have all my clothes storage and the curtains that I just Velcro in place again every night. Um, much better than tying them and rolling them up. I find it takes much less time. And then this is something I wanted to upgrade from my last bus. This is my laundry chute. Um, so this just drops down straight onto the water tank um, and I can easily unhook it when it's time to do laundry. And that again, just pops into place, doesn't move around. It's great. <laughs> This is my beautiful live edge shelf. I got this from the same man who gave me my reclaimed floor. Um, everything on here is Velcroed in place and it never moves. I was suspicious of Velcro until I met Bibby a bus. Stefan, shout out brother. Um, he had plants all over his bus and I asked, him, I asked him how he held them in place and he said Velcro. So I gave it a try and we've been down some pretty bumpy roads and nothing has moved. Nothing, it's incredible, I swear by it. <laughs> love the shelf, love the color. This is my little hanging uh, reading light uh, for when I don't want the big house lights on at nighttime. This is my Lucid mattress. It's a green tea infused full-sized bed because I'm a bougie hoe. Um, we fit three people comfortably on this bed in movie nights and sleepovers, and it works great. It's possibly the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on. It's absurdly cheap, eco-friendly, and you can use the tarp that it comes in to paint your bus or epoxy your bathtub. So, highly recommend Lucid Mattress. It's like 200 bucks. Go get one. These are my strand lights. I have two switches, one in the entryway and one right here by the bed. And it just, it's a touch on and a touch off. 
And my favorite part is when you hold it, the lights dim for that actual extra sexy vibe. And then once you turn it off again, it goes back on to full brightness. So you can really change the mood of the space and it lights up the whole bus at nighttime perfectly. It's exactly what I was looking for. Simple, easy to wire in, and beautiful. This is my dream sliding pantry. Unfortunately, sliding pantries don't like rocky roads to campgrounds. Um, so we, we had a mishap. It used to slide out and now it does not. So you may imagine perhaps it sliding out and you getting to see all of my beautiful canned goods for eating, but not today. You can imagine it though. So all together on this bus, um, I have spent around $17,000. So the bus itself with seats and a wheelchair lift was $8,100. Um, the electrical, I wanna say was around three grand. And then the rest is wood and home materials, Velcro, <laughs> and any of the other little additions that you see. So all together, 17,000. 17, <laughs> all right, this is my electrical cabinet. I knew from my last bus and from seeing other people's rigs that I wanted my electrical system to be accessible from the inside, even when it's really crappy weather outside. Um, so a lot of people put it under their beds and I just didn't really like that layout. So I decided that I had enough storage inside that I could sacrifice a cabinet area just to dedicate it to my electrical system. So, quick summary, we have the 300 watts of grape solar coming from the roof, feeding us that beautiful sun energy. That is coming in to my 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium battery. And I have a DC to DC charger for when I'm kind of just sitting around. So when I'm running, I can, I can just kick the, the engine on really quickly and that will charge my battery as well. I have a 40 amp grape solar charge controller and a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is my lithium battery charger. So when I'm using my shore power outlet that we showed you on the outside, um, this charges my battery directly. Um, the shore power outlet we, we I got also has, a, has two um, plugs. So one of the plugs is attached to this, so this directly charges my battery. And the other one is plugged directly into this little outlet. So this, when I am plugged into shore power, I can use however much juice I want. My favorite part of my last build was my open shelving. And so I knew I wanted to continue that in this build as well. Um, this shelf is just a eight foot long common board and a two and a, and a one by four. So incredibly simple construction. It is held on by uh, black angle brackets that I got from Home Depot. They each, a pair of them holds 200 pounds. So my vegan ass, 400 pounds of groceries, no problem. <laughs> um, underneath here, I knew I wanted a better curtain system than the roll-ups that I had in my previous build. So these are my uh, curtains. I do not know how to sew. So what I did was I took a regular uh, room darkening curtain. I folded it in half and I used these round clippy doodahs and they just clip onto the fabric. No sewing, no cutting, no weird loose ends. Incredibly simple for people who don't wanna to learn to sew like me. Under this beautiful little tray is my Flame King. I know it might seem incredibly simple to have this tiny little this tiny little stove in this big bus, but I found that it worked so well in my previous build and it is so incredibly efficient on propane that I, I if I needed something else I could get a camp stove or something. So I swear by the Flame King, it's an incredible choice. And then this tray has proven useful many a picnic. Um, the countertop is just a three quarter inch piece of sand plywood that I've water treated so that I can wash it and get it pretty messy and then just wipe it off and it's not gonna stain or water damage over time. Um, a note on my plywood palace, you may notice a lot of just bare wood. Um, that was an intentional choice. I didn't want to paint anything because I didn't want to be married to one color scheme. I wanted all of the neutral wood tones and natural colors to be um, 
I don't know, in, in harmony with all of the colors of my plants and whatever decorations I chose to hang up. So if I wanted a yellow pot, I could have a yellow pot because it wouldn't be throwing off like the green of the cabinet if I had painted the cabinet or something. So I love that I can switch it around and that it's still really homey and warm regardless of what decorations are going on. So you might be wondering why I named my bus Gumboot. <laughs> well, in a past life, I was a marine biologist <laughs> and I still have a really, really like soft spot for the Southern Oregon coast. And on a trip that my friend Isaac and I went on, we, I took him tide pooling for the first time and there's this creature called a gumboot chitin. And if you wanna look up a picture, you can. They're not very much to look at online, but <laughs> they're this large marine invertebrate um, and they're kind of like an armadillo where they get frightened and they curl up into a little ball and they're bright orange on the underside. And I just thought, what better way to pay homage to one of my favorite places on this world than to name a bus after it. So Gumboot is named after Gumboot Chitons, which hail from the Southern Oregon coast. <laughs> this is kind of my large pot and pan storage. Everything is just nestled in here. I have these beautiful little um, like drawer liner things that keep everything from sliding around and clanking on roads. I swear by this stuff. This stuff, the drawer liner and Velcro will save you in your build. There will be no rattling, there will be no sliding. It's incredible. <laughs> and then this is also bread storage. Bread and extra little propane tank things. So in my previous build, I just had the very simple latches and they were, they were good. They worked, but I wanted something that was a little bit more subtle in this build. I didn't want, cause I knew I was going to have a large kitchen. I didn't want 50 latches all around one, one of them I forget and everything goes flying. So I went with the, the magnetic child locks and sometimes you gotta, you gotta push around for them a little bit. Oh, I unlocked them. <laughs> I unlocked them for this tour. Um, but this is my silverware drawer. Again, you'll see everything is lined with this drawer liner. It doesn't rattle, it doesn't move. This is incredible. This drawer I made really deep because I wanted to be able to put my incredibly healthy jar collection um, <laughs> in here as well as Tupperware and whatever other necessities I needed. Um, and that just snaps shut and it doesn't, it doesn't come open, it doesn't, it doesn't move around. It's great. And all of my cabinets, all of the drawers are on that. So a little clip and then it opens. Ta-da. So under this beautiful little handkerchief here, I have my set power fridge and it is just plugged in with a 12 volt plug in the back straight to my solar. I was going to go with a heavy duty slider option, but uh, due to different building requirements and my inability to install sliders. I went with a, a felt kind of furniture mover and I find that it works a lot better. It doesn't move around at all. I don't have to worry about securing the fridge drawer or anything. And when I'm done, I just, I just push it back. And thank you to Awaken Days, <laughs> the shuttle bus, they suggested that I cut little notches out of the feet so that when it sits on the ground, I don't know, maybe you can see it that way, it just nudges into the floor and that way it'll literally never ever slide out. But yeah, love that fridge. It's the perfect size for me. This is the 42 liter, I wanna say. Um, and it's just gonna be covered with all the people that I meet along my travels. <laughs> but yeah, highly recommend this fridge for its price point. Some people get crazy with these fridges. They'll spend a thousand dollars on this. You know, it's, it's still a tiny little RV fridge. This was, I want to say like 250 bucks, something in that range. So I highly recommend this. This is my gigantic sink. It was funny when people first saw this sink, they thought that this was gonna be my bathtub <laughs> because it's so big. Um, in my last build, I had a really deep sink, but it was a really small bar sink, so I could barely fit one pot in it and doing dishes was just kind of a nightmare. My plumbing in my last build was also a little bit of a nightmare. I had a hand pump instead of the foot pump like I have in this build. Um, and the hand pump also just made washing hands a little bit difficult. So I knew in this build, I wanted to do a foot pump. Um, 
This is my whale gusher foot pump. It's an incredibly easy setup. Take it from me, the person who knows literally nothing about plumbing. Uh, it's two tubes, one goes in and one feeds the water out. Um, the one thing I did change up about the whale gusher system is they they have their own little faucet that you can buy with it. But I knew that I wanted a more like a home faucet. So that I, so I decided I reclaimed this faucet from the same man that I got my flooring from. And I just love that it gives this little, like you're in a little house instead of a, a bus. So both of these are, they still work. So these are the valves that open and close the faucet. So when those are open, the water will flow. And when they're shut, the water won't. Um, and this is my little in-sink uh, soap <laughs> sprayer doodah. Um, so I don't have to worry about putting my soap in the, in the sink every time I move or anything like that. But yeah, I love this sink. I love how deep it is. It's incredible. So my fresh water system is underneath the bed like you saw. And my gray water, um, this runs all the way inside and then it pops out the floor. And the gray water is mounted in the center of the bus underneath. That's the great thing about these commercial buses is they have like three feet of clearance uh, on the undercarriage, so you can really, you can really play around with your underbody storage. So this switch we had to, or this uh, like plug block we had to install, um, because this was a commercial bus uh, on a semi truck chassis. This did not have any sort of like 12 volt plug for any sort of accessories. So I had no, when I plugged, when I picked it up in the middle of the desert, I had no way to charge my phone um, with all the GPS directions. So I, I had to buy three different uh, of those like phone battery chargers just to make it home. So this is definitely an essential. If you're looking at getting one of these commercial buses, you're probably gonna have to install one of these ports up at the driver's seat. So this mermaid scale beauty, um, is just static cling window covering and because I wanted to keep the open concept in this bus I didn't want to put any walls or have to draw the curtains every time I needed to take a poop So <laughs> I thought this was a really good compromise. It doesn't take away from the space It doesn't um, put up any barriers and it looks really pretty Well, thank you so much for following along on my journey in my last bus and now this bus Feel free if you have any questions reach out to me. I'm sure I Isaac will put my uh, social media information in the comment section or however the heck it works. Um, but I'm at Dorit Ann um, on Instagram. So I hope to see you out there. See you down the road, friends. <laughs>